Thank you very much. So once again, my name is Paul Mambu, and uh, I'm Commissioner, Crop Inspection and Certification. I feel so honored and privileged to be sharing these thoughts uh, with the lens of a regulator. And I think the structuring was so good. Uh, the previous speaker, uh, I think having a, a clearly expressed some of the frustrations they face, it is only fair that now you bring the regulator to see how they think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, this will be my presentation outline. I'll give you an abstract introduction to the topic I'm discussing, background and rationale of harmonization, then the regulatory la landscape in the East African community and South African development um, uh, countries, then the challenges to harmonization, and then uh, propose a few pathways to harmonization, and I conclude. So just to uh, put the, the, the discussion in context, I am going to uh, discuss the regional harmonization of bicontrol regulations, the case for East and Central um, the East and Southern Africa. Right. Um, the increasing global prominence of biological control agents as sustainable alternatives to chemical pesticides highlights their potential to mitigate the diverse effects on biodiversity, human health, and environment. And this cannot be overemphasized. This paper focuses on the importance of harmonizing biocontrol agent regulations across East and Southern Africa to promote sustainable pest management, biodiversity conservation, and regional trade. As a way of introduction, um, agricultural pests and diseases pose a significant threat to crop production in Sub-Saharan Africa, undermining food security and livelihoods. The BCAs, which include microbial and invertebrate biocontrol agents, offer an environmentally friendly alternative to conventional pesticides. And we recognize this also as regulators. However, inconsistent regulatory frameworks across East and Southern African countries hinder the widespread adoption of BCA, of the biocontrol agents. We recognize this gap also from our point of view as regulators. Uh, therefore, harmonized regulations would ensure safer pesticide use, encourage sustainable agricultural practices, and facilitate regional trade. Uh, the lack of unified biocontrol agent regulations uh, in East and Southern Africa compli uh, complicates cross-border trade and limits access to innovative biocontrol products. Inconsistent risk assessments and registration procedures create variable safety and efficacy standards reducing farmer confidence in BCS. They, we recognize actually that even us as regulators that um, first of all, our current um, regulatory framework in place was designed mainly for conventional uh, re for, for registering conventional products. Now, our hands also get tired with this new emerging um, innovations of biological control agents, which are not well provided for in the law. In fact, you could say at best that many of our um, uh, uh, regulatory frameworks are quite outdated and they need to be uh, revamped in view of the emerging realities. Now, given the regional nature of agricultural pests and trade, harmonization would, simply, would simplify the approval process, reduce trade barriers, and foster regional cooperation in a sustainable agriculture. Now, having given that background, what is the regulatory landscape like in East and Southern Africa? And actually, I'm sorry, I didn't show the map for those who are not familiar with Africa. 
when you talk about East and Southern Africa, you are talking uh, about 50% of Africa in terms of, of space and area. Now, the regional landscape uh, currently, countries in the region uh, have adopted varying approaches to regulating the biocontrol agents. For example, Kenya and South Africa have dedicated regulatory bodies for biocontrol agent evaluation. Now, these two countries, I think, uh, within the Eastern and Southern Africa, are uh, the ones leading us in, in the regulatory space for biocontrol agents. While other countries rely on general pesticide regulations that are not tailored to biocontrol uh, agents. Regional bodies like East African Community and the South African Development Community, SADAC, have recognized the need for harmonization, but face slow progress due to national differences in priorities and technical capacity. Challenges to harmonization. Um, several obstacles impede harmonization efforts, and these include regulatory fragmentation. Each country has unique regulatory processes, increasing costs and delays for BCA approvals. Limited technical capacity. Many regulatory agencies lack expertise uh, in evaluating the biocontrol agents dossiers, leading to inconsistent risk assessments. And uh, to this end, we would really want to credit uh, FAO, uh, especially for giving the, uh, the, the, the technical guidance in many of their publications which we are lying on, and also some limited training to the regulators. Um, inadequate data sharing, a lack of regional platforms for sharing uh, BCA data prevents unified regulatory development. Diverse pest management pests, different agricultural practices across the region make it challenging to standardize BCA guidelines because um, as indicated, uh, the efficacy of these BCAs actually varies with the different agricultural practices and environmental conditions that they are applied. So we now propose uh, pathways to harmonization because um, you can now see where I'm heading to um, recognizing in, the, in the, my paper that regional harmonization systems are the way to go. So we now want to propose the pathways. One, to address the challenges uh, highlighted above, the following actions are recommended. One, establish a technical working group composed of experts from national pesticide regulatory authorities. <clears throat> this group would develop regional guidelines. And as I speak, uh, SADAC has done this, East African community has also done this, and we believe that this should be a good practice, perhaps globally. And for East African community, we had this, the, the technical working group uh, coming up with the harmonized guidelines for registering BCAs within the six member states of the ESC. Number two, create a regional regulatory authority. We believe that this would oversee the implementation and the enforcement of harmonized guidelines. Because as indicated, the pests, the diseases, the weeds do not respect the regional boundaries. And perhaps doing it from a regional approach uh, would be the best way. Develop regional guidelines, align BCA regulations with international standards from the FAO and the International Organization of Pharmacological Control. Four, strengthen regulatory capacity. Build capacity through training and shared resources, including harmonized data requirements. Promote regional cooperation by enhancing cooperation between regional bodies to facilitate data exchange and mutual recognition of regulatory decisions. Now, the mutual recognition aspect is very important. And we think that uh, if we did this, it would promote trade and safety. Engage stakeholders, involve researchers, industry players, and farmers to ensure practical and scientifically sound solutions. <coughs> and again, 
We think credit goes to the organizers of this uh, workshop for really um, bringing all key actors along the value chains of the BCS, right from the industry players, policy makers, the academia, the, and all those. So we think that this should continue. So in conclusion, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, harmonizing BCA regulations in East and Southern Africa, in our view, will support sustainable <coughs> pest management, biodiversity conservation, and will also promote trade. Addressing the current gaps um, and fostering collaboration will create a resilient agricultural sector that benefits farmers and the environment. With that, colleagues, I want to thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.